Today's episode of Field Phone Ops, we're going to look at a TP3 field phone. So here we go. And this is a TP3 field phone. As you can see, it looks like an EE8. It uh, uses the same case as an EE8 does. It uh, actually uses the same basic chassis with a few changes made. It was developed at the same time as the EE8 telephone was, the, the late 1930s. So I used during uh, World War II in Korea. Um, has some major differences than the EE8, and we'll compare them here in a little bit, but uh, it's, it's a sound-powered phone. It has no batteries, which means that it uses a, it's called a TS-10 handset, which is sound-powered. Uh, which makes this unique is it uses the, the, the sound from your voice, the power of your voice, to make the electricity, to make the phone actually operate. So it's fairly weak. The uh, actual receiving element, the speaker in this, is 30 times more sensitive than the one in the EE8, so it can hear the, the weak voice better. On a good day, one of these would probably go five to six miles on good phone lines. Um, we're an EE8, probably going to get 10 to 15. So they did have reduced uh, reduced range. Manual says you can use it with EE8s or uh, uh, local battery switchboards and stuff. But the problem is that the output of the microphone is so weak, it's difficult to hear. Sometimes you can't hear it at all. Um, it actually works, believe it or not, really good with the TA1 phone, which actually was the phone that came out after they'd done away with this one. But uh, if you look at the case, like I said, it's got the EA case. It has no batteries in it. It's got a selector switch right here where the uh, hook switch and the common battery local battery selector is. So you can select how it's going to ring, whether it's going to power a lamp or it's going to power a bell. Handset connects right here. It doesn't have the third handset connection because it doesn't have any power. And uh, actually, the... Uh, the speaker and microphone actually are wired together so you can hear each other so you don't really need to have a push to talk to switch back and forth. You just talk and away it goes. We'll go ahead and I'll compare it right here. You can see some of the differences or some of the similarities to the E8. Um, you can see it doesn't have the hook switch. It's got the E8. It's got the three connections for the handset. It's also got the third position for the battery, but since this doesn't have a battery, you don't need one. Uh, like I said, they saw use during World War II in Korea, and uh, they pretty much went away after that because sound-powered systems just just didn't didn't have the requirements the Army had for field phones. Um, we'll go ahead and I'll uh, shut down and hook it up to a believe it or not to a TA1, which it worked really good with, and we'll make some phone calls. Okay, I got it hooked up to a TA1. We'll make some phone calls. Like the E8, this has the. Uh, connections on it to hook a handset or a chest rig onto it. Now you had to be careful, you had to add, use the chest rig that was a sound powered one only. The other ones wouldn't work. So that's just another thing you had to think about if you're going to use it. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, see what we got this set for. Let's set it for, let's see what it's set for, set for lamp, okay? This is how it looked when you're getting an incoming call when it was set for lamp. It's got that little neon glow bulb on there that, that glows. And when you, if you didn't want to use lamp, you could run it in bell, which was this right here. Pretty loud bell. Like the E8 was not adjustable. The manual said if you wanted to adjust, you had to go in there and pack paper, or cotton, or a handkerchief around the bell in the bottom of the thing. But in this one, you just switched. If you didn't want to hear the bell, you just switched it over to, uh, to lamp, and you're ready to go. Uh, this... I'm missing, there's supposed to be a, a screw-in cap or clear cover that goes over the bulb that I can't find. Uh, I couldn't find the bulb either. That's a substitute. Uh, I guess they don't make a 60 or 70 year old neon bulb anymore, but that's it. As far as the audio goes, um, we'll go on. First of all, let's go ahead and we'll call the uh, TA1. Let's make sure it's turned up nice and loud. Same as an EE8. Do an audio check. Test one, two. Test one, two, three. It actually works really good. The sound power system work really good together. Like I said, uh, used during World War II in Vietnam. Uh, sort of went away rather suddenly after that. I imagine that uh, the EE8 worked better than they came out with the uh, TA1 in the 50s, which is actually a lot, a lot lightweight compared to this. And that's it. That's a uh, TP3 field phone. Uh, thanks for watching.